Thank you. I didn't prepare a speech, so, so I'll talk from my heart. This is not a war. This is a genocide of the Ukrainian people by a crazy man who cannot get over that Ukrainian people do not want socialism, Soviet Union, communists. They want to be with the United States of America. They want to be free people, but they want to be with the West. And he cannot get over. I'll tell you a personal story. I have my grandma. She's 95. She is right now in the city of Chernihiv. Actually, Chernihiv and the part of Kiev Rus studied Moscow and controlled Moscow. So they're bombing. They couldn't take the city. They're bombing civilians non-stop, day and night. The whole city. She has a daughter. She called her daughter. She lives in a little village by Chernihiv. And her daughter told her they came into village with a heavy machine gun, killed almost every person in that village. And whatever people who left, women and children, they forced them to work in front of the tanks as a human shield because they cannot take that city. So she told my mom, shock. she says, no, don't cry. We are not crying here. We are going to fight, but just give us some guns so we don't just fight with the sticks. This woman was born in Russia, in Far East. She's a Russian-born woman. And they're killing women and children. They do doing the bombs, vacuum bombs, carpet bombs. They, I mean, they are using illegal weapons. They now have special groups that trying to kill women and children tied to ex expect to Western Ukraine. I called my friend and she said she was able to get out. Her friend was trying to get out. She saw a woman in the gas station get shot with her children with machine guns. So she stayed in the city. They're leveling the cities to the ground, destroying the people. They're slaughtering them like in animals. They're killing the people. It is not a war. It's a genocide because we have a crazy man that believes that he has the whole world hostage. And then we have a president that talks about, talks about, and doesn't do things. You know, and what is he going to wait? When a million are die, then he's going to do more? I mean, we have not just a moral duty. We are the leaders of the free world. We want to, this is going to be the biggest genocide that ever this world experienced. And they're not asking them to fight for us, but they ask us to help, to become serious, to, that they have ability to defend themselves. That actually, they need to understand that we're serious about the sanction, not do a little bit here, maybe we'll just do a little bit this oligarch, this is bit, that we're serious. And I can tell you one thing, if we don't stop him there, he is not going to stop. He is going to go further. And then we'll have to send our children to die to fight this. So I think we have an obligation and duty to save this world, help Ukrainian people to survive. And this president need to get this act together and exercise some leadership. What's happening under his watch is atrocity. What he's doing to this country and to the world is unforgivable. But I think we'll get together as Republicans and Democrats, but he must act decisively fast or this blood of many millions of Ukrainians will be on his hands too. And all that oil that was blood that's flowing from Russia and gas, and we are buying that, and Europeans are buying that. They're going to be blood, it's, it's mixed with blood of the Ukrainian people. So I hope you're going to help me to send that message because we have to be strong and we have to stop. Thank you for having me. Thank you for sharing your story. You mentioned that your grandmother is there. I know you probably have other family members. Have you been able to be in contact with them? Are they safe? No one's safe in that country. It's interesting, my grandma is 95. She experienced Stalin, she experienced Hitler, but she says, we never experienced something like that, ever. This is 
barbaric and brutal to the level of unbelievable. And I hope United Nations will do some leadership because this is terrible. We have to deal with that. But I have some friends from college and other people. A lot of people are sitting on the ground. They are bombing nonstop civilians, nonstop, from morning till night. The city of Chernihiv, where I've been from for the last three days, bombing nonstop, exploding buildings, hospitals, schools, everything. They cannot even get out. I mean, they, they have no supplies. They cannot even get out from underground. A lot of people don't even have any ability now to have the phones. Thank God that Elon Musk helps a little bit with some of the stuff. So I really appreciate that he did step up. I hope more private businesses will step up. And like Visa and MasterCard, they say, we're not going to be part of this bloodshed. We're not be criminals. Like, every, what is he doing is criminal. So, so it, some people, you know, you still can connect. Some people you cannot connect, depending on where they are. But everyone is on the ground because people understood. They're not fighting the military now. They're fighting to kill civilians, destroy, level to the ground. If you conquer the country, you know, and if you want to govern it, you don't destroy everything to the ground. You don't destroy buildings. You don't put carpet bombs, bombs to destroy everything. They want to suppress civilians. But I can tell you, these people went through so much. These people went through so much hardship. Millions were killed by them, by Stalin and Hitler. I have almost my whole family was killed by them. These people will not surrender, but we need to give them a chance to survive. Otherwise, they have no chance. We'll have millions of people killed. We need to create a humanitarian corridor for some people to be able to escape for children, women and children, because he's now shooting at them. I think we have a responsibility. And another thing, I can tell you, the Ukraine was the third largest nuclear country. The third largest after Russia and United States. For a good reason, for right reason. We took nuclear weapons from them and signed a piece of paper. Tell them, we will guarantee your sovereignty. What do you think Iran is not going to be thinking? What do you think about North Korea? If you have nuclear weapon, you are going to hold the whole world star hostage. If you don't, anyone come for you and nobody will protect you. What is going to set in the whole world? What precedent we're going to set? If we will create a very dangerous world, if we don't act decisively, quickly, and have a speed and agility, we need to understand that Putin is not playing chess. He is a judo martial arts player. He understands in judo, you have agility, speed, and uses your enemy's weaknesses to strike. And he understood that we were weak. The West was weak. But he's underestimated the West. And I hope this president is going to step up and to show what America is about, because it's, he wants to embarrass our country. And what he's doing is embarrassing for leader of the world and our country to be there where we are. It's just embarrassing. And he wants to embarrass us again. He knew that we got embarrassed in Afghanistan. He wants to embarrass us again. And I I am as a member of Congress, cannot let him embarrass our country with the greatest country in the world. We are the strongest people in the world. We cannot let him embarrass us, or we will be a laughing stock for the rest of the world. We have to be strong because I know we have strong people in strong country with the best value. Everyone wants to be here. This is the greatest country, but we need to lead because there is no one else that can lead around the world. And if we are a strong country, the rest of the world will be strong, and we need to show our strength. So thank you. Thank you.